Hello, welcome to another Map Libre tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to visualize the military grid uh, reference system on a 3D globe uh, using Map Libre and also uh, Live Map. Before we get into the details, uh, I will show you what it looks like. So, if you go to the Live Map website and then click this uh, example links here, it will take you to this uh, web page. And if you go scroll down, find the MGIs. So, I'm going to show you two examples. The first one is just a simple 3D globe, but with the uh, MGIs, so MGIs stand for Military uh, Grid Reference System and you will see this 3D globe here and in the center you will also show you the label so uh, MapLibre basically allows you to show the, um, the layer and also you can add um, labels on top of that if you want to so this is one example, so you can zoom in, you can zoom out uh, the second example is it overlay on top of example uh, the uh, area, uh, satellite imagery for example from uh, Google and so this is the MGI's uh, grid. If you zoom in, you will see more detail. So you're gonna load um, at the second level, the, the, the grid uh, uh, system. And each grid roughly is um, 100, uh, 100 kilometer. And you can go even deeper. I'm gonna show you um, more details later. So this is what it looks like. And the reason why I want to show you this is because some of the data set, for example, from NASA, is being distributed using the um, military grid reference system. So sometimes you might be wondering, right, if you want to download the data for a particular area and you don't know whether how many, for example, uh, tiles that you want. So this can be very helpful and also can be useful if you're trying to source the data. Uh, you might want to see, for example, which grid uh, it is located in. So if you're working on a particular area, for example, I'm working on maybe uh, Salt Lake City and you will see here it has for example you need uh, two to three um, ties in order to cover that area one data set that's been utilizing this one is NASA Opera data set so if you google it you should be able to find information about uh, the data set if you click uh, you will be able to learn more about uh, the data set um, looks my internet is not working very well anyway uh, so I'm going to have more tutorial coming up showing how to use the NASA Opera data set. But for now, I will show you at least um, this is something you might you want me to be aware. So if we look at this one here, this grid, this is the um, military grid uh, reference system. So it's very useful that you can visualize them and then see how uh, data are being covered by the grid. Okay, so um, next, let me get into the notebook. So if you go to the uh, page here and then scroll down to find MGRS maybe on the left side here um, MGRS somewhere hmm? oh maybe I forgot to add it to the link that's interesting but let me scroll down here MGRS oh it's actually here okay under the map title here so if you scroll down find this one and then you should be to find the notebook example so there are two ways you can run the notebook you can download this one to a computer or you can use um, google collab to run it if you want to learn more about the military grid system you can just google it so for example here i'm going to show you the in uh, the definition so you can you just go to the wikipedia page here and i'm going to show you some of the information so earlier what i show you is just these two labels so roughly uh, from uh, level one to level two so it's each level is um, indicated by two characters and number and also um, uh, characters. So if you, on the first one here, let me show you one more time. Go back to the overview, I can show you here. <clears throat> right, so the first one, the label one is this. So it's basically going from the South Pole to the North Pole and the number is actually increasing. So if you see, um it's uh the number basically it be on top of the uh, utm projection so if you see the utm we have a total of 60 zones right 60 all the way from zero all the way to 60 and then also from the latitude is going to increasing from um the south pole to the north pole and you will see it's going to start with c so at the the, the lowest latitude in the southern hemisphere start with c d e all the way to X uh, in the northern hemisphere. And so this is basically the alphabetical order, except that we don't have I. So if you see somewhere from here, H, and then you jump to J without I. And also there's 
all is also um, not here. So from n to uh, p, so we done all. The reason for that is just to avoid the confusion with number, for example, one and zero. So you can think about it's basically a grid system built on top of UTM projection. So 60 um, zones, and then from the latest here, from C all the way to X. And then, so for each grid, uh, you can see this is level one. And then for level two, uh, it's going to basically subdivide them into smaller tiles. And then uh, it's going to be indicated by another two characters. So the second level is basically roughly 100 kilometer and then you can go deeper and deeper so it basically subdivide each zone into uh, smaller tiles smaller tiles and then at the end you can use this using this string to locate any uh, lo uh, objects on earth's surface uh, sub pre at the precision level can be go to up to one meter and so the nasa opera data set basically is utilizing this level two here uh, one thousand uh, 100 kilometer uh, roughly each tile is 109 i think roughly 109 um, kilometer and so that will be in another tutorial but for this one i want to show you how to utilize that and if you download this notebook to your computer then you should be able to execute and i'm going to show you how to utilize this first you need to import the library and then we can just use a couple lines of code to um, visualize the, the the data set in a 3d globe so i have generated the um reference grid system and then i put this one uh, on the internet uh i might i'm not sure if i have updated the url anyway so this is basically the url to the um to the to the file and i generated using uh, the data downloaded from here so if you go to the mgis now this one provides some data uh, you can download data for a particular location at, for different levels so if you go to the uh, data download and then you should be able to select a location and then you will uh, allow you to download a particular grid <clears throat> the problem that <clears throat> the problem is that the website doesn't provide you uh, the global data set so actually download them one by one eventually merge them all together and also do some uh, did some post processing so that now you can see a, 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 a seamless grid uh, covering the entire globe and so First, let's quickly go through the example here. So you can see this is the 3D globe and only just to create a map and then set the projection to globe. Um, we can also add a base map if you want to. Then we can use this GeoJSON data set. So basically it's just grid about the polygons. And the last step here is adding the label. So this is the new function that I just added yesterday allows you to add the label. Without this, you will just see the globe without the label. So for example, if I uh, come out this one, then you will just see the 3D globe, uh, just the, uh, the, the polygons without um, the label. So now I can add the label. So the polygon data set has that column called GZ, uh, GZD. So basically the grid zone ID and the color going to be white. You can change the color to something else, the hex color call. If you want to we also set the minimum uh, zoom level to 2 and then maximum level zoom to 10 so that means if you zoom out if the zoom level is uh, less than 2 then it's going to hide the label when you zoom in all the way and then you're going to show the label and also you can change the text um, the font size uh, the color everything can be customized so this is pretty cool also uh, on the right here you will see this uh, for example the uh, the globe control here if you click this one, it's going to change to, to this, the, the web mercator. And this is maybe useful if you want to see the distortion of the map uh, in different locations. So now this is just the UTM uh, mercator projection. And, but <clears throat> UTM doesn't subdivide the, um, the latitude. And the military NGI is actually subdividing into different zones. And so if I zoom in, zoom out, uh, maybe here a little bit. Right. So this is uh, the easiest way to uh, visualize the military grid. But if you want other levels of data, for example, the second level, then we can do it like this. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to um, load the data. And in this time, we have the Google base map as the base map. And then when you zoom in, uh, you're going to first see the level one here, the, the MGI grid. And so for each, each zone, you can see the number here. When you follow zoom in, it's going to show you the second level. So this is the fine detail. So you can clearly see, for example, somewhere, they say in US, uh, in Florida, and you can see this, the red color 
is the level one and then the white color is the level two so when you hover your mouse you will see you will be able to see the mgrs um, indicator here 17 r mp so this is where you can visualize the data and like i said the nasa opera data uh, data set is using this um second level so we will show you more data uh, examples how to utilize the data later but this is how you can easily visualize them if you want to look into the source code uh, you can also do that as well i'm going to quickly uh, explain uh, the data set uh, the source code so uh, similarly to the previous example we use the um the level one the grid zone and then we specify the light color to red so that means we just want to show for example just the um the red color the red outline of the uh the polygon and then we also have the second level the second level when you use the pm tiles because uh, the data set is a little bit larger so it's i think roughly 200 uh, megabyte and it's going to be very slow when you're trying to load that onto an interactive map so we create i, I created this pm tiles it makes it easy to load the data and then in order to show it as an outline for example i'm going to show you it's just white color because this is a polygon data set so you can you if you can use the fill to basically to um you can just use the line because we're also going to show the outline but the problem is that when you save the outline when you have your mouse uh, in the center for example it, it will not show you the two tips so the reason why i add two separate layer because right now there's a limit the map library has a limitation so uh, if you just want to show the outline of a polygon then you have need to have two layers basically the polygon layer and also the outline layer and the polygon layer we're just going to basically utilize the two tip so when you have a mouse you're going to see the attribute uh, the line is just going to show you the outline otherwise if you just show the outline then you have to click somewhere on the line you will see the two tips so it's not very really convenient so hopefully in the future um, map library we implement uh, the functionality so that we don't have to add uh, two separate data layers and then uh, lastly we're going to add for example this outline the uh, the grid zone and also the labels on top of the grid and then we change the color medium zero to something like that so this is how you can easily load the data and ideally um, in, we want to be able to fix it so the data based on a grid so in the future if you click somewhere on the map you will see that the uh, grid and then you can source all the data available within that uh, particular grid so uh, this is all i want to show you for this tutorial again it's very simple basically you have the grid data and then we're going to show it on the map and optionally you can add the label if you just want to see the label and um, i'll see you in the next uh, tutorial see you bye bye